Yo, what is up everyone? We're about to be doing some CFD runs. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Ansys Workbench for you guys and we're going to go ahead and get started. The shape we're going to work with today is a double wedge. It's going to be two dimensional and we're going to shoot for a supersonic flow. Probably Mach 2. We'll just do Mach 2 for now. I mean, I already have one here, but I want to start from scratch anyway. I'll show you guys uh, how it goes. Hurry up, bruh. I feel like it's loaded already. Alright, so what we want to do is start off with our geometry. By the way, this video is going to be split up, split, up, split up into four parts. So, let me explain why real quick. So, if I just drag this thing called Fluid Flow Fluent into our workbench, we see that there's a bunch of parts to it. So, in order to run Fluent, you need to establish your geometry, and then you mesh out your geometry, and then you could finally run your your setup and solution for all that. So, so for our the way we're going to split it up, we're going to do geometry first. The second video will cover meshing, and third video will um, we'll do the setup, and then the fourth video will actually will analyze the results, and then we'll go from there. So let me just go ahead and delete this. I don't like doing this. I mean, you could just use this. What I like to do is I like to start off with just a simple component system, which is here under component systems. Drag it here. This is just geometry, so you don't need to name this at all, but I like to just to stay organized. First thing I'm going to do is change the analysis type to 2D. And then I'm going to go ahead and right click because there's this new thing called space claim geometry. And I've only been using ANSYS for like a month, so I, I know nothing about space claim. And for me doing my research, I haven't seen anyone that has offered to do tutorials for space claim. Um, all the tutorials I've looked at have used design modelers, so that's what I'm going to use. So we're going to open that up. Design modeler. A, 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 A. Let's go. Let's go, it's lit. Let's go, it's lit. So design modeler. First things first, we want to sketch on the XY plane. That's the plane that we're used to. I'm going to do this so I could, you know, you know. So first thing we want to do is we want to sketch. So go here. You have two tabs, modeling and sketching. So we want to go with sketch. Um, do you guys know what a double wedge is? Here, let me just kind of draw it out for you guys. Boom, 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 boom. I mean, you saw what I was going for, but it's not exactly, uh, yeah. All right, so let me go ahead and fix that. What I could do here is you could apply, so you could do dimensioning already, and you could add constraints. One of the first constraints that I'm going to do is I'm going to make these points here. Oh, crap. Sorry, don't do that. Okay, to apply the, the symmetry constraint, you want to pick your axis of symmetry first. Boom, and then your two uh, things. So this point, this point. So now these two are going to be symmetric about this. Now, if that's the case, the way this is defined, um, I believe I can go ahead and set an angle. So I'll make an angle from here to here. Um, I'm just going to say 10 degrees or so. Now this thing is very huge, so I'm gonna, what I want to do is I want to define my cord length for this airfoil, this double wedge airfoil, so wait, what? Hold on. Something doesn't look right. Oh, that's not a, okay, that's nothing to worry about. Okay. So I want to establish a horizontal length from the front, which is here, which should be here also, to the back of the airfoil. And to make it non-dimensional, I want to set it to 1. So fine. let me just do that. Clicking this um, helps you see everything a whole lot better. So 
Where's my selection tools? Okay, I don't really know anything about how to move that, but if you guys know how to scroll, you could do this and make sure everything looks good. So dimensions are good. It's a chord length from chord length of one, and it's a 10 degree half angle double wedge. Email from a school, dude. So <laughs> okay, what do we got to do? So first things first. So we made our sketch for our airfoil. Now what we want to do is create a surface from the sketch. So you go to concept, uh, surface from sketches, like I already have. As you can see in the, the modeling tree, it's right here. It wants us to select our base objects. So if it's from sketches, it's going to be from the sketch. Select them all, hit apply, add material, yes. And then we are going to hit generate. So now, I don't know why it does that, dude. But yeah, so now we have generated our airfoil, and it's a surface. Next step, we want to create our fluid domain. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go with the rectangular domain for our uh, for a rectangular domain <laughs> for our supersonic run. So, okay, what I want to do first is I want to define. Okay, I'm going to define some planes first before we do that. Because I'm going to be using these planes in order to cut later on. So, um, basically I'm going to take the YZ plane, right? Which if you look here, it's coming out of your screen. And the, as well as the XY plane. And I'm going to shift those over. So I'm going to create a YZ plane in the middle of this airfoil and one in the back of this airfoil. But I'm also going to create an XY plane in the in the back of the airfoil. You guys will see why soon enough. So to keep myself organized, I'm going to call this rear XY. So if we wanted to find a new plane, we want to say from plane, base plane. I'm going to do um, from the XY plane. Also, you don't have to pick from plane. You could do you could define a plane other ways. You have from face, centroid, coordinates, all this other stuff. I want to define it from the XY plane though, and I want to transform this. Um, I'm going to say global X, because then it's going to take um, the real X. So I want to offset it by one. And that's why I set the airfoil to a chord of one, so I can easily do that. So if you see here, the plane moved back. Um, it was offset about X one meter. So there you go. So we have our new XY plane. Hit generate, that's rear XY. And I did that because, okay, I'll explain why. Let me just create a sketch here real quick. Sketch, we wanna create our rectangular domain. I wanna do this both on the right side of this airfoil and the other side. So, hopefully, yeah, yeah, that's good there. Let's hit trim. So this will just be one, you know, this will just be one entire rectangle and not split up. Um, dimensions, constraints. I want this to be symmetric about the x-axis again. All right, so now this is symmetric. What I want to do at this time now is establish dimensions. So horizontal from the rear of the airfoil to the edge of the domain. So now it's a good rule of thumb, uh, this is a note for you guys, it's a good rule of thumb that the, um, your domain, the rear of your domain should be at least 12 times as long as um, the cord of your airfoil. So since our cord length is 1, um, we could define this as 12. I'm going to go ahead and go with 12.5 though, just, just to be sure. Now as you can see, this domain goes way back, and this catches all the phenomenon that will go on behind the airfoil so so that's our horizontal we could do our vertical as well well what happened dude <laughs> I did all that explaining and then I don't you know I guess I could establish one from here to here also Okay, so we can mess with that, but H1 from behind the airfoil, we can make that 12.5. Okay, so this keeps that there. 
the front, um, we're going to play around with that value. So let's go to vertical, define that from here to here. Um, I don't really have a good rule of thumb for this. I'm just going to make it 12.5 also. We do that because in supersonic flow, we expect to see shock waves, right? So if we limit our domain too much, these shock waves can bounce off, bounce off of the wall here and then actually interrupt our flow. And we don't want that, so. Um, okay, I think these look good for now. Let's say, what happens if I change that to four? Yeah, that looks good there. Um, we don't need to hit generate. We want to create a surface from the sketch again. So we're going to select all of them. Boom, 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 boom. Let me zoom out so I can see this. Boom, and boom. Apply. We don't want to add material, we want to add frozen, since this is going to be our fluid domain. So hit generate, we see that. Um, important thing to note, guys, is that now we have two, um, two surfaces. We have the surface from our airfoil and the surface from our fluid domain. So what we're going to do is subtract. Um, we're going to create a cutout of our airfoil. So go ahead and go to create, boolean. For this boolean, we don't want to unite, we want to subtract. The target body, um, we're going to want to select this. You could either select it here or here. So select the fluid domain as your target body, and then your tool body is going to be your, your airfoil, which you could select it this way. How I just did, you would have to select this in order to like, go behind the fluid domain, in a sense. Or if you know what they are here, see, since this is highlighted, it's obvious that this is the fluid domain. This is your airfoil. So I'm going to select it here. Hit apply. Again, you want your airfoil for your tool body and then hit generate. What happens? You only have one surface body with a hole or a cutout for your airfoil. So um, technically this would be good enough to go in the mesher, but in order to help us out for our next part, we're going to go ahead and create um, different faces. So we're going to divide this domain up into several different parts. And that's where all these different planes come in. You don't have to do it the way I do it, but that's how I'm going to show you guys. So what I want to do now is create a rear, what is it, YZ? Create a rear YZ plane, because that's what I'm going to use to cut. So not from centroid, from plane. So we're going to take this YZ plane, the original YZ, and then transform that about, no, not rotate, <laughs> not rotate, um, offset global X, one. So this creates a YZ plane. Okay, base plane, you have to select your YZ plane. Come on, man. Um, yeah, so that creates your YZ plane in the back. Hit generate, that's there. I also want to create another um, YZ plane but mid so plane six here i'm gonna crawl i'm gonna call it mid mid yz from plane um you could select rear yz actually okay i'm just gonna go ahead and do that for you guys so transform um about global x what if i say negative 0 0.5 and you guys see what i did there so since my reference here, our base plane was the rear YZ plane, which was here at the back of the airfoil. Um, if I go negative 0.5, which is to the left, then I end up in the middle here. So that's what I did. I'm creating a YZ plane in the middle. Go ahead, hit generate for that. Um, okay, so we have a couple cutting planes here. YZ, rear YZ, mid YZ. And then in order to cut it, cut it horizontally, we are just going to use the ZX plane. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, create, no, 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 tools. We want to do this thing called face split. Face split, you don't want to do it by points and edges. You want to do it by plane because that's, that's the whole point of us making all those planes. Target face, this, this is one whole face right now. Tool geometry, so we're going to split it. Actually, okay, let's... And I guess it won't really matter. Let's do the ZX plane first. This will split it horizontally, right? Because um, the ZX plane is like this. Hit generate, boom, split two parts up and down. All right. 
Let's go ahead and keep going. Keep face splitting. Another face split by plane. If you hit by, um, if you keep it as by points and edges, you won't be able to select multiple um, faces at once. So if you go to by plane, when you hit hit, um, when you hold down control, you could select. Sorry, both this face and this face. Yeah, you know, for your target faces. Apply. Now we want to split it about our original YZ plane, which is here which is in the front of the airfoil. So hit apply, generate. Now you see it's split in the front of the airfoil. Pretty cool, huh? This helps with our mesh a lot later on. So let's keep going. More face splitting. We want our results to be as accurate as possible. So that's why we're doing a lot. By plane, you are going to hit. OK. Can you guys see that? If I select these two planes and then I split it about the mid YZ, it's not going to do anything, right? Yeah, it doesn't even go through it. So what I'm going to select is this. And how do I unselect, dude? I don't know. How many faces am I picking? Two? How do I unselect you, dude? Oh my god. Well, at least you guys see me <laughs> go through mistakes also. Tool. <laughs> I'm just going to delete that face split, create a new one. By plane, target face, select both of these faces. Now we're tool geometry. We are going to use our mid, mid YZ. Hit generate. Boom. See that? All right, one more. Just one more. One more face split. Again, by plane target face you want to select these two okay that yeah that's weird I don't know why I chose that tool geometry the rear YZ plane hit apply generate boom now you have eight different faces and this is gonna help with our mesh later on so damn how long did this video take 17 minutes man that's longer than my other one Alright guys, so that's it for now. This geometry should be good to go. Don't forget to save <laughs> save all your progress. I'm going to go ahead and save here. I'm going to save it on my desktop. I'm just going to call it uh, Double Wedge again. I already have one here because it's called Super Sonic Door. But Double Wedge. J just save your file guys so you don't have to remake it again and again. Go ahead and hit save. It takes a while the first time. Hello, design modeler. Yeah. So that's it for now. We've created our geometry. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.